The Apple Plus series The After Party is a murder mystery comedy created by Chris Miller and produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. The duo of Lord Miller are famous for writing and directing and producing. They've worked on some of my favorite films and TV shows. Their projects include the 21 Jump Street franchise, the Lego films, Into the Spider-Verse, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and the pilot episode of one of my favorite shows, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This review will only contain light spoilers, as it was mostly set up for the series. The whole series is available to watch right now on Apple+. Plus. At first, I only watched the first episode, and I felt like I could do an episode by episode, but I enjoyed it so much, I just kept gunning through and finished it all. The show has an interesting premise, taking place at a high school union after party, with each episode being told from a different attendee's perspective. There's a large cast, including Dave Franco, who plays Xavier, a pop star actor who is throwing the after party and is the victim of the season. Tiffany Haddish as Detective Tanner, who leads the investigation and spends each episode talking to a different person, getting their story of the chain of events that led to Xavier's death. Sam Richardson plays the character of Anique. He is the main suspect. He works as an escape room designer and plans to use those skills to clear his name. Yannick is assisted by his best friend, Jasper, played by Ben Schwartz. I'm a big fan of his from Parks and Rec, House of Lies, and The Earliest Show. At the face of it, the after party seems like a basic murder mystery rom-com, not much different than Only Murders in the Building, but with a younger cast. You get a bit more information up front in the first episode of this show. You learn about the relationship dynamic between the few of the characters. Of course, some characters are romantically interested in another. Some are dealing with divorce. Some appear to be alcoholics. And some are just not nice people. But since it is a telling of the whole series of events, you get a lot about every character each episode. And it's very localized. That's what I like that it all, for the most part, takes place inside of this building. So you get a bigger depth of how people see themselves and how other people see everyone else around them. But what really sets apart this from other murder mysteries and most shows in general is that Lord and Miller touch. Now, if you're a fan of WandaVision and its homage to TV and different time periods, this show does something along those lines. Most episodes follow a different film and TV trope. There's a rom-com episode, an animated episode, an action star episode, and even a musical episode. The musical episode I thought was really fun, but I wanted it to be a little more classical musical feeling, but it fit 100% in the context of the person singing and what they were talking about. I should clarify that the episodes themselves are not entirely in those genres. The musical episode was not full of songs. It maybe had two, maybe three songs. But the moments the characters explain the series of events from their perspective, it changes into that genre and sort of fits in the character's overall aesthetic. The romantic person sees a rom-com. The guy who loves music, he has a musical. It's things like that. The big tough guy in high school who still thinks he's badass, he has the action star episode. So it's, it, it goes like that, but it's not the entire episode. It's just them recalling the events. So it's how they see themselves. And I thought that was a very nice twist and a way to show all these different genres without going too deep into it. The after party itself puts these characters in a mind frame as if they were back in high school. You see some vying for attention and seeking approval, forming little cliques. So the setting of an after party can feel a bit like a frat house but the series continues to make you see these characters being in a place like this is out of the norm for some of them. Tiffany Haddish does well as Detective Williams, getting information from the guests and allowing us to see what transpired from their perspectives. The show is a bit cruder than something like Only Murders in the Building. It has more dirtier jokes, but nothing that I would consider over the top, but it did push the boundaries of what I consider crass. I'm no stickler. I'll watch anything, but it gives me some of the older, early 2000s kind of a dirty jokes feel at some points. 
as Anik is an escape room designer, he and Haddish seem to be two different avenues that we'll be able to get pertinent information from. I think that this was a fair play and solvable mystery. I didn't figure out who the killer was, but after finishing the show, I saw that quite a few people did figure it out. I just was not one of them. Maybe if I had took time between each episode, I might have been able to glean more from what was going on. But I watched the first episode, maybe waited a day, and then I just watched two through eight in maybe two days. I enjoyed each episode, though they didn't all leave you with a good strong hook at the end of it that makes you feel like you need to watch the next episode. Each one was about an hour long, and it gives you more insight into the characters. They felt very fleshed out, more than a 30-minute show can usually do. I don't feel like any time was wasted in the hour. No episodes felt like filler or not enough information was being told. I was invested in learning more about the characters, especially the ones that was just kind of in the background that you may have only heard a few words from here and there. In the end, I felt it was clear and very plausible culprit of the crime ended up being the killer. A quick edit, there's been some recent pretty horrendous allegations against Tiffany Haddish. I don't like to be quick to place blame on someone, but her choice in lawyer does make things seem to appear as if she did some pretty bad things. I'm not going to get into it, but I will just say, even though I think she did a great job as a detective, I think the show will either be delayed or it's very, very likely that they will try and find someone else to fill the role. Either way, I'm not keen on supporting her until more information about that has come to light, but I did enjoy this show, so I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Those are my thoughts on the After Party Season 1. Are you interested in watching it? I very much enjoyed it, and I look forward to a Season 2, whenever that may be. But have you guys watched it? What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you at the after party.